Hey guys, Nexic here. Today I want to share with you my set of upgrades that I did on my Tronc C X5 SA 3D printer. Stay tuned. Here is my modified Tronc C in all of his glory. I do a lot of modification for the past few weeks and I change a lot of parts on this machine. But I also try to reuse as much as original parts possible. Let's start first with the enclosure that I made from plexiglass and the glass combination. I use transparent plexiglass for the front door panel and this front upper panel. Both left and right side panel are made from transparent plexiglass, as well upper side panel and upper back panel are also made from transparent plexiglass. So I can have a nice and clean view inside the enclosure. For back and bottom panel, I use non-transparent or matte plexiglass. And for the top panel, I use a regular 4mm glass, because plexiglass just couldn't handle the heat without deforming, as it sits right above the heated bed. I use the same type of aluminum extrusion to extend the top frame to make this upper frame part, which then I close with a transparent plexiglass all around. I make and print this corner bracket or extended holders in ABS and I use a threader repair kit to make short threads inside the extrusions and I screw them secure to the frame. Now this whole upper frame top cover can be easily unscrewed and removed if I need to change or repair anything that I can otherwise reach from inside the enclosure. All plexiglass panels I cut myself by hand so they are not perfect and I use the silicone to glue panels together. On the top glass panel, on all four sides of glass, I use the thin rubber pipe, which I cut in a half, and I place each half side in the extrusion, and then I slide the glass in. This prevents glass from rattling, and it seals the gap. You can kind of see it here if you look close enough. I have to mention that if you can find the plexiglass in all dimension, then you could extend these side panels even more on the side that I could. That would look even better, but since I could not find many plexiglass in my town, I had to use this dimension, which is 600 by 400 mm for each side panel. It's not the best, but it does the job. On the front door, I remix and print this door handle, which looks nice, and it also works as a door limiter. I remix and print these door hinges as well, which allow door to open 180 degrees, which is nice. I place the temperature sensor in the upper corner of the enclosure and I can read the real temperature here on the front. Temperature inside the enclosure is between 48 and 50 degrees Celsius when I print ABS and since the all stepper motors are outside of the enclosure, there is no worry that can ever overheat. For heating this huge aluminum bed, I use 600 watt AC silicon heater with a thermal insulation underneath to maximize efficiency, heat loss and electricity bill. This silicon heater heats up bed extremely fast and since this 3D printer is all metal, I highly recommend that you add the ground wire like I did on the corner. This will protect you if anything ever shorts out and since this printer is not to draw high DC current like before, I swap this 360 stock fan cooled power supply to less powerful one with a passive cooling and now it's completely silent. On the top of power supply, I install the solid state relay, which controls the silicon heater, and I print the solid state relay cover for extra protection, as my relay did not come with a transparent cover protection, but it was very cheap. I reuse the stock power supply cover from the kit, but I print this small plastic extender to be able to screw down the power supply in the same place, since this one is much smaller than the one that comes with the kit. Keep in mind that it's a good idea to check and maybe upgrade the fuse inside the switch, since now the printer is using much more power on the heated bed than before. My original fuse was 5 amp, and here in Sweden we have 220 volts AC, so 220 volts multiplied by 5 amp equal 1100 watt, so that's plenty of spare power. But if you're living in US, then you use 110 volt AC, 110 multiplied by 5 amp equal 550 watt. So we need at least 100 watt more for other components, 
which is too much for a 5 amp fuse. And this fuse will most likely heat up a lot, or it could even melt this plastic switch, or the fuse might just burn out right away. So it's a good idea to replace 5 amp fuse with a 10 amp, if AC in your country is 110 volt. On the leveling adjusting nuts, I add extra butterfly nuts and screw them tightly against each other to make sure they hold that position. And not only that this enclosure is a very useful for printing ABS, who loves to warp and crack, but is also very useful for printing PTG and other filaments as well, as it keeps pretty stable temperature inside the enclosure and it also protects the printer from the dust. To make the frame even more stronger, I installed these metal corner brackets, some are made from metal and some I print myself. Now the frame is much more stronger and stable than before. To get the more airflow to cool down the motherboard and silent the printer down, I design, print and install this new control box cover, which uses 50mm fan instead of that noisy 40mm that was before in the stock back cover. On both X and I stepper motors, I installed the stepper dampers to block the noise and vibration and I installed the heat sinks on them as well. I still use standard acrylic plates to hold stepper motors in place, since this metal one that I order doesn't really fit that good. They are a bit short and the frame holes are not matching, so I still use the stock plates. I changed the stock extruder to the Titan clone and I reused the original stepper motor. This new setup is way better than the stock one, now it has a much more torque and it's more precise, it uses much less filament and there is no more skipping steps on this extruder. To use the Titan extruder on this machine, you need to tune the extruder steps and direction to match the feed rate and you need to upload it to the firmware. On this board, that's very easy, you just need to copy the text file to the microSD card and run print. This will then write new parameters in the firmware and I will include all the changes in a text file in a video description as well all the codes that you can change in this firmware using this simple method. I removed the bracket from the filament runout switch, now it's work much better as it moves freely with the filament and is not scrapping the sides of the filament like before when it was fixed in one position. I place the small piece of teflon tube before extruder and I push it all the way in, this keep the filament in the center of the gear all the time. I print this filament spool holder for easy spool change, I add a longer threader rod, plastic splicer and I reuse the stock acrylic plate. I might print in the future and install one of those closed type spool enclosure to protect the filament from the dust and the moisture. I also change X and I carriage. I download and print this new I carriage which I found on a Thingiverse and now this new carriage are much more stiffer, stable and stronger than the stock one. Great design. I highly recommend that you print these parts in a PTG as the temperature inside the enclosure can be over 50 degrees and the PLA will start to get soft and lose strength. I also replace the stock plastic belts with these nice reinforced rubber belts and I change all pulleys to 16mm GT2 geared and the smooth ones to match the belts and I add the belt spring tighter on the belts as well. Now the movement is much more smoother, better and much more precise than before. I print this new X carriage as well using PTG and the blue ABS. I install the genuine E3D V6 all metal hot end with 0.5mm reinforced stainless steel nozzle so I can print carbon fiber and other abrasive filaments with no problem. This all metal hot end can go up to 300 degrees celsius with a stock thermistor and with easy thermistor change you can go up to 400 degrees celsius if you ever need to go that high. In the E3D V6 kit you also get heat block silicon sock and the new teflon tube. Also with easy parameter change you can go over 150 plus degrees on the heated bed without problem. This AC silicon heater in fact can handle up to 260 degrees celsius which is overkill and you probably will never use such a high temperature in a 3D printer world. I redesign and print in ABS this chain holder and from the cable chain I cut and take out at least 5 links as the chain was too long. For leveling I reuse the stock level probe and it works great with this 300mm PI printing surface that I installed. Print sticks much better now compared to the bare metal surface on which I was using all kinds of adhesive to make the print stick on it. 
That's why there is so many scratches on this heated bed, as it was heavily used without any 3D printing surface. And I have to mention that this PA printing surface is a bit tricky to install, and you have to go very slow to install it perfectly, but it's totally worth it. I wish only that comes in a different color to cover all of these scratches on the heated bed. On the right side of the X carriage, I add 40mm turbo fan, which is very powerful and it blows much stronger than most of other fans that I came across. I tried to find the supplier of this fan as I ordered it pretty long time ago. And the last but not least is the lighting. I add the pure white LED stripe on the front of the extrusion, which makes this printer look very cool at night. Time lapse looks much better, and you can change the nozzle or level of the printer much easier now as everything is nice and bright. And guys, there you have it. That was my highly modified Tronc CX5 SA 3D printer. Now this 3D printer is absolutely awesome and I love it. I spent weeks working on this machine and it's totally worth it. Links of all parts that I use in this video I will place in a video description and if you have any question or suggestion feel free to leave them in a comment below. And if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I catch you next time. Bye bye.